People are now celebrating their dog or cat's birthday by having a birthday party. What on earth is a dog birthday party? So I know that we've all got furry friends and sort of animals that we love, but I discovered today that maybe we take this a little bit further than I thought. If you've got a dog or a cat, the in thing now is to throw them a birthday party. Have an actual party for your four-legged friend. How sweet is that? I've never heard of this before and it kind of popped up online the other day that somebody was having a doggy part birthday party. So apparently people invite their dog's friends and such to come to the party. So this is like, a, you're actually throwing in a proper party. And then obviously there's even like, I was Googling this just now, and there's websites about how to plan your doggy birthday party. Like this is an actual thing and it gets quite serious. I didn't realize how serious this was. But if you like, if you have a four legged friend, a dog or a cat that you love, you could potentially next birthday throw them a birthday party. Here's some tips I found out online. You need to think about the location of your doggy party. Where's the best place where they're going to have a good time? Maybe it's a park. Do you want open space for them to run around and play? Or maybe you want to do it at home somewhere that uh, everybody can get a little bit cozy and sleep if you've got like dogs that maybe don't run around a lot. I mean, I never even thought of this stuff. You can tell that I am not really like a doggy person, can you? Even though that my dad's got a dog. And uh, the best thing about our dog though is it just sleeps all the time. It's a bulldog called Betty and it just sleeps all the time. So she would be the easiest one to throw a party for because she would just sleep. And so we just need to find doggy friends that sleep the same as she does and then you're sorted. <coughs> Now obviously, if you're throwing a party for your dog, you're gonna need doggy food as well as human food. So you kinda of gotta plan two parties at the same time. One to entertain the people that are there, and obviously to entertain the dogs because the main person the party is for is the dog. So it's not really a person, is it? It's just a, a canine. So apparently you can make a dog birthday cake. Okay, so not only are you going to throw a party, you've also then got to prepare all the food, which is doggy edible. You can make a doggy birthday cake. This is amazing. Also, I saw this one. There's something called pupsicles. Pupsicles are a thing and apparently great for doggy parties. The pun in that is awesome. What more do you want? I mean, you should make it just for the fact that it's called pupsicles. I think so. Well, not only do you need to think of doggy treats, but because it's a doggy birthday party and all the owners are going to bring their dogs, you also then need to think about how you're going to supply food for the humans that come. And of course, being a doggy birthday party, it does mean that you have to kind of put a little bit of a doggy twist on all of the treats that you bring for, you, for the humans as well. Breadstick bones. Can you actually buy breadstick bones or like do you have to make them? This is my question. Or do, are they just breadsticks that you call breadstick bones? I mean, I don't know. Also, you could have fetch pretzel sticks. I don't know what makes the difference, but I like it. How about some puppy chow? I don't know what puppy chow is, but it does sound interesting. Puppy chow could be a thing. Just remember, this is for you to eat, not the dog. Okay. <laughs> and then the last one they have on their list is popcorn. You could have popcorn for the humans at the party. I think you should just make these just for the puns. I think so. And then if that's not enough, you need to think about the activities that your dog and his canine buddies are going to get up to. So. Some of the suggestions is a backyard water park. For my dog, that wouldn't work because, work because they're afraid of water. So if your dog's afraid of water, don't do that one. That's not going to work. But every other dog might be fine with it. The other one is ultimate fetch. This could like be really, you know, this could go down really well or not so well, depending on the dogs. They might kind of get a little bit kind of 
too into it. The other one is a photo booth. Can you imagine like a photo booth on all the owners and their dogs just going in for a photo? I mean, I don't even know what to think about this anymore. It's, it's kind of verging on like, either it's gonna be really, really good or it's just gonna be a cheese fest. I'll leave that one up to you. And then the last one, which I thought was quite interesting, is a relaxation area. Is that for the dog or for you as the human? Either way, I think that's probably the best part. You just go and chill, go in there, relax. All these things you got to think about for a doggy birthday party. If you didn't know this was real, you do now. And you could be hosting your next doggy birthday as a doggy birthday party. 